This is my most recent project car which I purchased from Northern Sydney, Australia. With the car being 1600 kilometers away, I grabbed one of my closest mates and jumped on a plane to see the car in person. I was on the fence the entire time because not only was this the most expensive project I've considered thus far, it is also a Mazda, Holden and Land Rover parts bin. But I signed myself up anyway for the experience and in only less than a month, the car would arrive on my doorstep. This is a 1999 Bullet Roadster which has a 3.9 litre Rover V8 engine or maybe it's a 4.6 litre, honestly I'm still trying to figure that one out. The Bullet arrived with many goodies such as a coolant leak, sump leak, gearbox leak and most likely the list is well and truly going to continue. I struck a deal with the previous owner to keep the New South Wales Rego on the car just so I have enough time to get it registered in Melbourne. So I got stuck right into the list of items. The coolant leak makes the car undrivable, so that's what I'm gonna start with first. Once I started flushing the coolant and removing the piping, it was very clear that something more was wrong here. I needed to investigate more in case coolant isn't flowing correctly. Although this is very important for every vehicle, this particular engine runs very hot, so I need to get this one right. Instead of just replacing the piping that's cracked, I start to break down the front end so I can see what's actually going on underneath this water pump. I'm taking the opportunity to clean parts while they are off the car as it makes it much easier to do. With the water pump, now off, it is very clear that a buildup of possibly corrosion has caused a blockage which needs cleaning. This water pump is not a standard Land Rover part and is from a Rover SD1 V8 engine. Therefore, none actually exists locally, so I had to use some unusual methods of cleaning before I can reinstall it. Because I was nervous about debris sitting in the engine block, I thought it'd be a great idea to use compressed air and yeah, this was the result. The water pump mating surfaces are getting a good chemical clean and received a light sand before I was ready to start installing. I'm using water pump gasket glue and thread sealant for only one bolt which coolant makes contact with. A bit of low strength thread lock is applied to certain bolts which appear to have it on before and everything is torqued to spec. Now for the fun part, reinstalling everything else. Being much more organized this time round, I've labeled everything in bags, making the reinstalling process heaps easier. Instead of just the standard rubber piping, I purchased these flexible chrome pipes that seal using rubber ends. With everything together, I can start a coolant flush using a degreaser solution and demineralized water. I would flush the coolant not just once, or twice, but four times just to be safe, which in hindsight probably wasn't even enough. Unfortunately for me, the thermostat can't be accessed without removing the distributor, so I'd need to bring the car to operating temperature, then wait for it to cool down before I could complete the next flush. Ready for the final fill up, I've mixed 100% concentrate coolant with demineralized water, but before I do, I'll take the car for a drive to increase the effectiveness of this last coolant flush. So this is the first time that I'm actually driving the Bullet Roadster in Melbourne. Since it arrived on the truck, I have just been working on it. It has not moved from the garage, it's been on jack stands the entire time. And I will say it is a fun little talking car, but I've still got so much work to do. Tomorrow, I have a appointment booked to get some new tires, because these tires are they're mismatched, but they're also very old, and it's not ideal to be driving on. Even now, I just feel a bit sketchy driving on these tires. I need to really detail this interior, because it stinks. It's got these shitty seat covers. I need to see what it looks like under the seats. I did have a little peek before I bought it, and it seemed to look fine, but I guess we still have to wait and see. And there's just a number of other things I need to do. So I think the car's well and truly warmed up and I'm gonna go take it back to the garage, let it cool down. Whilst I'm letting it cool down, I can work on the car a little bit and maybe get rid of these seat covers and then I can complete my final radiator flush and then top up with the actual coolant that I need. Next on the list is an oil change.
I'm using the oil which was recommended by the previous owner, but I'll soon find out that it pays to do your own research. The clutch fluid looks very old, so I'll replace that now and come back to the brake fluid later as I already plan to upgrade the brakes. Using a one bottle method, I can pump the brake pedal and watch the magic happen. The battery is surrounded by corrosion and needs replacing, so I'll upgrade to a bigger battery in the process, as in future, I actually plan on having a working sound system. I'm still waiting for the engine to cool, so perfect time to rip out these smelly seat covers and give the interior a quick one over. Much better, and good to see that my seats are in better condition than I expected. Lastly, I can fill up the coolant, but this wouldn't be the last time I'd have to do this step. The next day, the Bullet gets some new shoes, choosing my favorite tire, which is the Michelin Pilot Sport 4s, and now I'm ready to finally get some mates together and drive this roadster long distance. And a wild coolant leak appears. One hour from home at 1 a.m. Perfect. This one kept me up all night because I thought maybe I didn't seal the water pump correctly. But luckily for me, it was something a lot easier to fix. The rubber hoses that came with chrome pieces were unsuitable for this application and one cracked under the pressure, leaving plenty of coolant on the road. Using quality radiator piping this time round, it was a quick fix and once again left me filling up coolant for the last time. But that's not all because remember how I used the engine oil recommended by the previous previous owner. Well, after talking to some Rover V8 experts, it turns out that the oil I used was incorrect, so I guess I should consider this an engine oil flush since I'm changing it after driving only 60 kilometers. With all this fluid flushing, I'm racking up quite a big pile of automotive waste. After all this, I am happy to say that the car passed Roadworthy and is now officially registered in Melbourne as a 1999 Bullet Roadster. But don't think I'm done yet because I've got a very long list of repairs and mods to tackle on this bullet so expect more videos to come. And make sure you follow my channel so you can keep up to date with all my new videos. Thanks.